Huh? The others have yet to return? <laughs> Come on! Let's hurry! <sighs> we... Oh, oh... We're not too late, are we? Just how far did you all go? <laughs> Everyone catch your breath. Come on, deep breaths. One... Two... Now, don't panic. The party hasn't started yet. <sighs> we made it! Oh, Paimon's exhausted. <sighs> Paimon gets tired if she has to fly too fast! <sighs> oh, not to mention dropping all those leaves. Paimon's hands are cramping up. Huh. Sounds like someone needs to exercise more. Huh? You guys picked up a new teammate while you were out? Indeed. This is Kelly Roe. I believe you'll remember her from yesterday, though you weren't introduced. Hi, everyone! Hello! But you're not the only ones who's called in reinforcements! <laughs> Look who we got! Wait! Xiao? Where'd he go? Xiao! Come on out! <sighs> That we've all regrouped. Let's. Huh. Scratch that. Looks like we're still waiting on my co host. <laughs> they say roosters crow at first light and finches go to bed at night. But Director Hu Tao's always on the ball. Anytime, anywhere, she'll answer your call. Um, are the theatrics really necessary? We're already on day two of the festival. The opening ceremony is over. <laughs> But my dear, dear Paimon, it seems you are not yet aware. That was not for my own sake, but for a special guest who's joining us today. <laughs> Director whose manner is as exuberant as ever. It always makes quite an impression. Oh boy! Now this is a surprise. Mr. Zhongli, I hope you are well. Xingqiu, what can you tell me about Mr. Zhongli? He seems like somebody very important. Yes. He's held in very high regard in Liyue Harbor. He's extremely erudite in many different domains of knowledge. Allow me to introduce you all to Zhang Li, a consultant at the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. His expertise is limitless, stretching from the celestial orbs to the terrestrial ores, spanning modern and ancient culture, delving into literature both prosaic and poetic. He may be my subordinate, but he is certainly a qualified poetry expert. And so, we have invited him here tonight to judge the compositions. The director exaggerates. I am but vaguely acquainted with a few lines of classical poetry. Should you consider me to be remiss in my appraisal of your own compositions, please correct me. Ah, yeah, enough with the modesty already. If I didn't know better, I'd say you seemed nervous. Just focus on judging. Please rest assured that I shall rise to the occasion, Director. Let me do a quick count. One, two, three, four. Great! Equal numbers on both sides. Huh? Are you counting me too? Okay, fine. But consider this a favor. Hmm, with our Fontaine friend present, perhaps we should rename this event to the Three Nations Congenial Poetry Gala. Also, I'm just noticing that Paimon should only count as a half-teammate at most. Hmm, that kind of puts Team Traveler at a bit of a disadvantage. Well, how about this? I'll join in as well. Director Hutel, here to help out in your hour of greatest need. What does everyone think? Naturally, the more the merrier. Being the host of the festival shouldn't stop you from having the chance to enjoy it like the rest of us. Then, it's settled. Everyone else in the audience, feel free to join in too and support your favorite team. What about me? Shall I keep track of the score? No need for that. The teams are just a formality. We're all friends here and this isn't intended to be competitive. But what do you think, Judge Zhongli? I concur, Director. Moreover, 
It would be disingenuous to impose upon our friends from Mondstadt and Fontaine a competition in which they are judged on how rigorously they can adhere to Leo poetic conventions. Since this is a congenial poetry gala, should we not begin with inspiration and finish with friendly conversation? The aim being for all participants to enjoy themselves. Oh, <sighs> that's a relief. I was so nervous about this, but it sounds like it's going to be pretty relaxed. Couldn't have asked for a better judge. Zhongli said everything I was supposed to say only far more eloquently. So, without further ado, I shall pass the baton to Venti. No problem. Friends old and new, put on your thinking caps and take a deep breath of fresh air. The second stage of our poetry gala will now commence. Matching couplets! Perhaps I could break the ice with a humble contribution to inspire others to share their brilliance. Please listen to the first line in the couplet. <clears throat> Lounging in luxury inside a Shinue kiosk booth, delighting in countless contemporary tastes. What? He managed to think of one already? Oh, he seems like a real expert at this. Hmm, Shinue kiosk. Should that be paired with Lily Pavilion? Or are they too similar for a couplet? Oh, this is pretty difficult. Shinue Kiosk. Contemporary tastes? Hmm. I guess I should pair the modernity of their VIP dining experience with an emblem of the past. Ah! Maybe where I was training that one time. That was quite ancient. The weather was terrible that day. Okay. I got something. Surrounded by history, outside a Tianghong Pass pavilion, as lightning sets the boundless tenebrous skies ablaze. Wow! Chongyun completed the couplet! Hmm. Xinyue Kiosk is a renowned modern restaurant, while the mountain pass of Tianhong is a prominent historical landmark. These two iconic locations form a complementary pair. The imagery also contrasts rather well between the two halves of the couplet, one half describing a leisurely and comfortable indoor scene, the other portraying a hazardous outdoor scenario where there is no protection from the elements. Huh? I was just describing what I experienced that day. <laughs> I guess I just got lucky. All right then, I guess I'll start the next couplet. Mind pines for Mingyun. Flesh confined to Qingse. Spirit striding high on Zhu Yun's clouds. Oh, Chong Yun, you dark horse. Looks like you came to play today. This conjures the image of one with lofty aspirations, whose life is limited to a small town, but who awaits the opportunity to one day ascend above the clouds. The use of various locations for their symbolism is quite novel indeed. Soul shines like jade stone, dressed in finest silkware. Lucent heart still beats within me now. Wow, how did Noel do that? A superb line. It employs the metaphor of precious stone to describe one of noble and moral character with a pure and clear heart. The symbolism in this case is centered around objects, truly the work of a skilled poet. That was a commendable couplet. All thanks to your guidance while we were out on our inspiration walk. I'd like to start the next couplet. Up into the misty karst, down among the grassy marsh, all for lotus seed and bird egg soup. Lotus seed and bird egg soup? What is it, Diona? Did you think of a second line for the couplet? No. Everyone's poems are so complicated. I need more time just to understand them. But when I heard lotus seed and bird egg soup, it made me think of berry and mint burst. Maybe because I mixed a similar drink recently. <laughs> North beyond the Starfell Lake. South across the windswept plains. Just for berries squeezed and mint infused. No wonder everyone praises the Traveler so highly. You answered so quickly. 
Both halves of this couplet require intimate knowledge of the terrain in question and the local plants that may be found there. The two of you are clearly both seasoned travelers. Does this mean I helped? Miata! Hey now, Zhongli. Don't just praise everything you hear. You should question and press them a bit. Don't worry about upsetting anyone. After all, I'm here to take the heat. Then allow me to try another. Qingxin has no heart. Still, it soothes the human heart. Is she talking about the medicinal effects of Qingxin? Hmm. This is a hard one to match. Sweet dream is no dream, yet it nurtures people's dreams. Sweet dream... does that really match? Hmm... Since the suitability of the match has been queried, I shall act according to the director's wishes and ask you, what is the link between Sweet Dream and Qingxin? <laughs> uh... Oh, you mean eating a delicious dessert before bed will make you sleep well, right? <gasps> You're amazing! <laughs> then I agree. The two halves of the couplet match. This point is well deserved. Points for me. Points for thee. This judge gives out points for free. But if you ask me, everyone's being a little too conventional so far. Let's push the envelope a little. Go nuts! Oh? In that case, why don't you finish this one for me, Hu Tao? Round moon in the heavens, full moon at night. Celebrate with Circle of Friends. Hmm... Oh, square meals in the basement. Big bowls of rice decorate with cuboids of meat. Huh? What the...? Ah, we have ourselves a pedant's couplet. The two halves have no thematic connection, yet each word has its perfect parallel, meaning the two halves do form a cohesive whole. The strict pairings make this no easier to achieve than a thematically coherent couplet. Blah, 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 blah. So verbose. Zhongli, just tell me if I got a point or not. Of course you did. I presumed it went without saying. Ahem. <clears throat> Through Cheongji, I walked a hundred miles. At Guili, I ended my march. In Dihua, the silver grass grows in two styles, but horsetails don't trot out the marsh. From vendors I bought some fifteen steaks, at dinner I sizzled the lot. At pressure the tenderloin cooks in two ticks, but fifteen won't fit in the pot. Huh? So that's a pedant's couplet. Papa thinks she can do that too! I thought of one. Wolf hooks can't hook there and bunny. Aw, that's a cute couplet. Sweet flowers can't out sweet sister Barbara. Huh? <laughs> now, that's the passion we like to see. Although, unfortunately, your response was technically one word too long. Hmm. In that case, Whopper flowers can't whop jumpy jumpy. Oh, this monster's got talents. Whew. I'm so relieved. I at least managed to get one. Hmm. Nestling by a roaring fire, scent of tea wafts from the stove, reading through the heart of clear springs. <sighs> wow, Noel came up with another one! Come on, match the couplet! Paimon knows you can do it! Uh, do you really think Paimon has what it takes? Fine, Paimon will give it a whirl. Nestling by a roaring fire, 
scent of tea wafts from the stove. Reading, hmm, uh, seething in the pouring rain, sword of pain swipes at my foe, beating up the eye of the storm. What? Really? Yes, very good. The image of challenging powerful foes in the harshest of conditions seemed to manifest before my eyes, and it was perfectly juxtaposed against the atmosphere of leisurely reading with a cup of freshly brewed tea. Really? <laughs> Maybe Paimon has a knack for this after all. <laughs> it appears that my services as a judge are no longer needed. Kelly Roy, are you okay? You look like you're getting tired. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Although, I do have a question I'd like to ask. Have all of you read Heart of Clear Springs? I haven't actually read it. My dad told me this story once. It's about a spring fairy and a young boy. Oh yes, the story of a spring fairy who left her homeland and met a boy under the moonlight in a faraway land. The boy poured out his heart to her. Over time, the boy... Ooh, I don't know if Diana's father mentioned the part about the kiss to her. In the end, the spring fairy left the boy and was never heard from again. Ah, oh, yes, that's it. Many years went by and the boy became an old man, but he never stopped believing that the fairy was real and not just a dream. Sounds like a tragic tale. So, what do you guys think of the Spring Fairy in the story? I'm sure she made her decision with the best of intentions, but the boy couldn't hope to understand why she left. It's a shame that the misunderstanding never got cleared up. Well, do you think she should go back and see that boy again, if she ever had another chance? Now? But isn't he an old man by the end of the story? Hmm, isn't it a bit late? What if it just led to more regrets? Oh, sorry. No, oh, Maybe I'm being too pessimistic. If Paimon was that boy... Hmm. Actually, Paimon would definitely want to see the Spring Fairy again, no matter how old Paimon got. After all, she's the love of his life, right? I see. Oh? <laughs> Looks like the party's still going strong over here. Are you coming up with more couplets? Need my help? Stick to hosting, Tone Deaf Bard. If you get involved, you'll only match every couplet yourself and not leave any for the rest of us. <laughs> I never knew you had such a high opinion of my abilities, Paimon. But the couplet games are all over now. Tomorrow's theme is freestyle poetry. Do we have to share our own poems with everyone? That's right. If you're not feeling confident, don't worry. It's never too late to register for Venti's Poetry Cram class. I'll sign up. Oh, me too. Hold on there, Buster. Before you start peddling your classes, just how much freedom is there with this freestyle poetry exactly? Aren't there any requirements at all? It's as free as the winds that blow. And there's nothing freer. There are no limits to genre, form, content, or anything else. So long as it comes from the heart, you're welcome to put it into poetry. Give it a try. There's no better chance to express your innermost thoughts. Whoa, that's almost too much freedom. Paimon can't decide which way to go. Our travels, or maybe all the food that the traveler has cooked for Paimon. Will you come too, Kelly Roy? Paimon wants to see what you write! Oh, um, yes. I'll be there. Ugh. Ugh, my nose is starting to itch again. Alright, I shall leave you to privately ponder your poems and bid you all good night. See you tomorrow!